Hi there, welcome back to The Art of Business English, where we help people like you get the language skills you need for doing business in English. Now, episode 164, today I'm looking at how to have effective business meetings in English, and these are tips for English language learners. So often, I'm sure you've experienced this, you're attending a meeting and it's an everyday part of business, but uh, those meetings are often in uh English or, or you know, you're, you're, you're participating with people who are native, maybe you're, all of your colleagues, uh, you feel that they speak better English than you, uh, you lack confidence, you feel nervous when people ask you questions, you try and stay quiet in meetings because you feel that, you know, if you speak, you'll make a fool of yourself. And it's a bit sad, really, because often, and I'm sure you'll agree, you, you know, you've got lots of experience, you are professional, you've been doing your job and you've been working in your industry or your field for many years and you could be classified as an expert or at least, you know, a highly experienced professional. So what happens, this uh, lack of confidence in business meetings, uh, it translates to you uh, really not showing people how effective you are and how professional you are, or at least you feel that you don't, uh, you know, transmit this uh, confidence or this professionalism to your colleagues, which is pretty sad. So with that being said, I thought today I would share some tips with you guys to help you, you know, gain this confidence because a lot of it is just your perception of your English and it's not really to do with uh, your actual English level, okay? so. Let's start with my tips for how we can be more effective and participate more confidently in a meeting in English. Right, the first one is preparation. And I'm sure you've heard this before. Lots of people uh, say, you know, you need to effectively, uh, to have effective meetings, you need to, you know, plan effectively. And it's true, (laughs) that's why people say it. And if you are participating in meetings where you know that you'll need to speak English and that you know you'll need to participate, then putting in the time to prepare makes a big difference. So let's have a look at uh, Tim Ferriss actually has got a quote. He's quite extreme in his approaches to meetings because he doesn't like to waste time. But let's listen to this quote and um, let let me know if you agree or disagree. So direct from Tim Ferriss. I don't agree to meetings or calls with no clear agenda or end time. If the desired outcomes or outcome is defined clearly with the stated objective and an and agenda listing topics or questions to cover, no meeting or call should last more than 30 minutes. Request then meetings in advance so you can best prepare and make good use of the time together. So he sums it up pretty well. You know, a meeting should be really hyper-focused, effective. It should have one objective And if we plan our meetings effectively and have a very clear idea about what these objectives are, and those objectives are clear to the people who will be attending, then we can have much more hyper-focused meetings. So uh, objectives, you need to define your objectives and and, uh, as an an effective meeting should only have one objective. That's my opinion personally. Uh, It can have points more points that lead into that main objective, but it should be focused on one objective. Secondly, you should be able to write it down in a sentence. So this is also good for your English. If you can write down the objective of your meeting in one sentence, it's going to help you be very clear about what it is you want to achieve, and it's going to help you prepare more effectively. Next thing that I tip for preparation is know your role. If you are leading the meeting, that's quite, maybe it's obvious to you that that is what you are doing. You're going to be leading this meeting and you'll be the chair. But maybe you've been invited to a meeting and if you are a participant, then you need to know clearly what uh, you are expected or what is expected of you uh, in this meeting. And that will help you to prepare appropriately because with preparation, you'll have everything ready and et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's very obvious, but this will make the meeting flow uh, much more fluidly and it will make you feel confident because you know exactly what you're doing. All right, have everything ready is another tip for preparing. Make sure that you have all the relevant information and documents, facts or figures. This is a must. 
And why do I say it's a must? Well, if you know you will already be nervous about your English, then you don't want to get even more nervous during the meeting trying to find the important information. Not having the information to hand will make you feel nervous. People will look at you, you'll start to stammer and mumble and you'll get even more nervous. Plus, it will actually impact on the productivity of the meeting because you'll be wasting time. Okay, and if you're trying to have a 30 minute meeting, which is what we recommend, then every minute is precious. Uh, so even in your native, if you're having a meeting in your native language, when you can't find the documents, how do you feel? You feel nervous. So if we, you know, multiply that with the, with feeling nervous and having other members of staff looking at you and all of this, you're already feeling nervous about your English, then this is going to make things a lot worse. Okay. Another tip in the preparation phase is think about what you need to say, okay? This one is quite obvious, but I feel that people often overlook it. That means that people just are busy, they go into a meeting and they're not, they're ill-prepared. So they maybe have the information, but they don't really think about what they need to transmit and how they're going to say that and what expressions they can use. And maybe another thing is like what questions might may be generated. So if you are responsible for delivering information or communicating ideas, think about the, the vocabulary, the expressions that you can use to communicate them, but also think about what type of expressions may be generated from the content that you are delivering or the message that you are delivering to the people. This will help you be ready. And finally, in the preparation stage, know who is coming. If you are a participant, try and you know ask the, the meeting organizer, who's coming? Why are they coming? I mean, there are three questions that you should ask yourself. Why are the, the people coming? What do they need to know? And what do they already know? Just by spending like 15 minutes or 10 minutes answering and uh, or asking and answering these questions, you're really gonna be much more prepared and it'll mean the meeting's more focused as well as you will have the information and the expressions and the ideas ready before you get in there. And you won't be like talking about things that are irrelevant and you know basically wasting people's time, which would then make you feel nervous when people start saying, well, that's irrelevant to this meeting. What are you talking about? I mean, you want to go into a meeting super organized, super prepared, especially if it's not in English. All right, let's look at the next step now. The next step is small talk. Now, small talk, it's, you know, pretty obvious everyone does it we have to make small talk at the start of the meeting but it is really important okay think about it there is nothing worse than sitting in a room with people you don't know and the room is silent and people are like really uncomfortably looking down at their phones uh you know it's really not a nice place to be so this is really uncomfortable if you don't know people. It's even worse if the people that, you know, if you arrive early at a meeting and maybe it's just you and some external attendees, so maybe they could be potential customers or they could be uh, other colleagues that have come in from other, other departments or other cities or other countries. God, you're gonna, you're, you're, you're gonna put a bad image in the people's mind uh, of someone who is quite rude or a little bit like, why are they not talking to me? So being like confident and having you know some small talk prepared is really going to make things much uh, nicer so what are my tips for small talk well obviously it's easy when you're talking to colleagues that you know but if you know that people are coming so this comes back to know who's coming if you know that there are going to be people coming that you don't know then have some you know expressions ready or some questions ready so be ready with some expressions or questions um, that's obvious okay just think of something to say before you go in there if you don't know what to say then uh on our course the confidence and business meetings course we go into detail about what type of things you can say in a meeting but you can also like another tip is have some ideas of recent events at your at your disposal uh, on the ready so just have a quick look at the news or what's going on around you in in the world but obviously like um for example, with COVID now, like it's so boring. It's always the same. It's just so negative. So maybe you, 
you know, think of something lighthearted. Try and find something that's not depressing. You know, like maybe it's nice just to start them the meeting on a positive note and not always be talking about negative news that's going on around us. And, you know, be sensitive to your participants is my final tip for small talk. And again, this goes back to knowing who is coming. Okay, so, you know, you need to choose some decent topics. Uh, but, you know, if you know who's coming, if you know that one of your colleagues loves football, then maybe you should talk about football and it's pretty boring and obvious, but just something lighthearted can help. If you're not sure who's coming, um, then find out who's coming from the uh, from the, the meeting organizer and then generate some relevant topics based around the news or something that's quite generic. Stay away from politics and religion and things like that. Uh, but yeah, there are, there are lots of topics that you can, uh, you know, generate questions from. And also... You can uh, ask open-ended questions, so WH questions like, oh, what was that like? What do you think of this? Uh, or you can use tag questions, which is also covered on our course. So those are really useful uh, stru like structured questions to make it easy for someone to reply to you and get into the conversation. Okay, let's look at uh, the next part of, the, of this lesson or this episode, which is key expressions for participating. So... Luckily, meetings are quite structured. And if you know the structure of a meeting, which is pretty straightforward, like we have, you know, the arrival, the small talk, then we open the meeting and then we discuss the, the agenda, the points in the agenda. Uh, there's some back and forth, maybe someone presents and then we close the meeting, we bring it to a close. Okay, so there are different stages of meetings, but knowing these stages, then we can prepare expressions for them. So um, some typical skill areas that you would I would recommend you know, and it was what we teach in our course, is asking for clarification. That's super important because, you know, you often you don't understand everything in the meeting. So you need to clarify uh, certain things that are said. And you can do that confidently and it actually helps you gain confidence uh, instead of really being nervous and saying, I'm sorry, I didn't understand you. Uh, also, expressing opinions, super important if you want to, you know, participate in the meeting and, and give, give people your opinion, showing them what you know and what you've got to offer. And then there's checking and clarifying, which is a little bit of an extension of asking for clarification. But we like to check on uh, things, check that we've understood things correctly, uh, or we want to clarify what people didn't understand we said. So maybe people want you to clarify something, which goes both ways. And of course, there's agreeing and disagreeing and, and there's various degrees. There's a lot of skills and there's a lot more, but those are some of the main ones that you need to know. Okay. If you're not familiar with some of these expressions or how to do it, don't worry. We've got, uh, we've got some resources that can help you. That pretty much brings us to the end. Um, but as you can see, participating in meetings doesn't need to be an uncomfortable or nerve wracking experience. It just requires a bit of planning and understanding of the language to use uh, in meetings. In fact, improving your confidence and levels of participation in meetings uh, will lead to more productive meetings and better outcomes for you professionally, which you should think about, okay? Remember, the way people perceive you professionally is dependent on how well you can communicate and connect with them. So. It may sound like it's not that important, but effectively participating and transmitting your ideas in a meeting or in, in, in many aspects of business is, is incredibly important to your overall success. And if you're not sure where to start, okay, then don't worry, I'm here to help. You guys can check out a free sample course on uh, meetings, It's uh, or you can actually enroll in the full course, but there's a short course. Uh, but the, 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 the short course is how to confident, confidently participate in meetings. It is uh, modules taken from my uh, premium course on confidence in business meetings, but I've just condensed it down so that you get exactly the expressions that you need to participate at each stage of the meeting. So check out that over at the blog and you can check out the free sample or you can enroll in this short course. And of course, we will be taking a deep dive in all of the aspects of a meeting and will help you to understand what type of language you can use at the different stages to make you confidently participate in those meetings. Well, that's it for me, people. I hope you found these tips useful and I encourage you to check out all the resources over at the, business, uh, the Art of Business English website. And of course, subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, or just subscribe to our, our emailing list because every week we release more content for you and we've got loads of free resources 
Uh, and of course, it's all there for you to help you improve your business English. Well, that's it for me, people. Take care, and I'll see you all next week on the Art of Business English. Bye for now.